Hello guys, MonkeyBot here, and today we got our Tamacon showcase to look at today. So I've already watched through the video quite a few times now. I'm going to point out the things that I've noticed. Some of it may be important, some of them may not be so important. But just bear in mind, these videos are likely made quite early on in their development cycle, so there's a lot of things that could change here. But let's talk about it and let's see what's going on. The first major bit of news is that a start location has been revealed. It is what I predicted, it is the plains of Jean Valjean. Uh, which is right at the north of the Mountains of Morn in the Chaos Wastes. And he starts off war with a minor Norskan faction, which at the moment, that is the Norskan faction that coalects Sunny to vassalizes. So there's got to be some sort of changes there that haven't been revealed yet. Maybe Coalec has a new vassal to begin with, because it will seem a little bit weird that you start at war with Coalec's vassal. I think that's a little bit weird. But I'm going to go into a deeper dive of what his early game is going to look like in a separate video. Moving on to the second major point that I want to talk about is the infrastructure buildings. They have been changed. There's a little showcase here showing how the infrastructure buildings and the other buildings are now being back to the traditional building slots where you buy it at tier one and you upgrade it to tier three, tier four and so on. Uh, the military buildings, again, are the exact same they were before. There's probably a little bit of an income difference here. You've got a pure income building now in the infrastructure slot, so there probably won't be so much income in the military buildings. But until we get our hands on the DLC, we're not going to know specifics and numbers. But it's nice that they've showcased how it's going to change here. Also note that we have now been given an official garrison building for Nurgle. In the current patch of the Nurgle faction, we don't have a garrison building, and you have to rely on garrisons from all of the buildings, which makes your garrisons very unreliable depending on when you're going to be attacked and how far during the cycle it is but now that we've got a proper garrison buildings we can defend our cities much better which is amazing we also get a quick look on the updated tech tree there's not any text that they show off other than one here which is just increasing hp of all characters and the healing cap for all units within all armies so we don't actually get to know what these texts do so it's very difficult again to know if this tech tree is going to be improved or not but it looks really good they kind of taken the chaos dwarf approach where you can split it between two paths so you've got military and then you've got faction but yes until we get the specifics on the actual content of these texts it's going to be very difficult to know if it's going to be any good moving on we get a glimpse of tamacon's skill tree here which again they don't show off many specifics but it looks like we're going to get some form of regen some fear and terror but i also want to have a look at the first skill that they highlight here now the skill itself doesn't seem very interesting it's just minus recruitment costs and plus 10 casualty replenishment rate for all non-demonic units but for some reason this includes festus now i don't understand why festus is there for multiple reasons. One, he's not even in the same faction. He's in a Warriors of Chaos faction. Two, it is within Tamakon's own army. And because Festus is a legendary lord, he will never be in the same army as Tamakon. So I don't understand why he is there. There's three reasons why he could be there. One, it's just a bug and it's not intentional. Yes, it's early access. Yes, it's there has been mistakes. Two, you can get him as some sort of hero to place in Tamakon's army later on down the track when you are doing your recruitment for your warbands. Or three, you can now confederate Festus at some point. But yes, it would still be a bug because he cannot be in Tamakon's army. I don't know what this means exactly. It could just be nothing. But if they have introduced a feature where you can now confederate your Warriors of Chaos following the same Chaos God as your Mono God faction... I think that would be a really cool feature for them to add. I don't know how it would be if you did it the other way around. I can't imagine Warriors of Chaos mono god factions uh, confederating the true mono god factions. But yeah, the other way around would be amazing. And hopefully that would work for all of them. So then Azazel can go into Nakari's faction. Valkyr the Bloody can go into Scarbrand's faction. And then Village will then go into Kairos and the Changelings faction. I think that would be a really good update. But again, I could just be thinking into this too deeply and it could be nothing and it could just be a bug or something like that. Who knows? I guess we'll have to wait and see on release day. It does quickly mention plagues, but I don't think there's anything to add here that the blog hasn't already discussed. So I'm going to move swiftly on to the chieftains mechanic. So we finally get a look at all of the chieftains. The first I want to talk about Case the Befouled. Uh, apparently I was pronouncing his name wrong, but it's Case apparently. And it talks about all of his abilities here and some of them look really nice. So you level Kaste up by defeating 
uh, all sorts of Chaos factions. So that's the Warriors of Chaos, Corn, Slaness, Zinch, and Norska. So all of the Chaos factions, excluding Beasts, Men, and other Nurgle factions. And he can get some quite nice buffs here. So you can see there's the Chieftain's abilities on the right-hand side, where one of them, where if you activate it, it enables attrition for enemy armies in case current armies province. I don't know if this is a one-time purchase where you have it and then you can you keep it for the entire campaign or whether you activate it and then after a few turns it will disappear and you have to reactivate it again. I don't know. Again, we'll have to wait and see. And then there's a chance of spreading plagues plus 20% for all armies. But that seems to be locked. But that's because if you uh, upgrade his fealty eventually on the third tier, as you can see here, you unlock that ability later on, as well as unlocking a Toad Dragon and plus one capacity for Rot Knights. Moving on, we have the Warriors of Chaos, Kargan the Crazed, and he gives us a nice ability here where you can replenish your movement range. So this must be a one-time activated ability, not like I said previously, you have to activate this and on that one turn you get to use that ability, and then there's probably a cooldown where you have to reactivate it again. And with this legendary hero, you can recruit a variety of Chaos Warrior units, such as Spiring champions hell cannons and dragon ogres moving on you have the familiar legendary hero where you can get different familiar units the regular one and the one with great weapons as well as the frost dragon from the norskin factions moving on you have the skin wolf legendary hero so i was wrong in the previous blog video it it wasn't a skaven it's now a skin wolf where you can recruit skin wolves mammoths and war mammoths into your army moving on you have the beastman bray shaman legendary hero where you can recruit centigors with throwing axes cygors and gorgons and then finally the chaos to wolf legendary hero where you can recruit blunderbusses infernal iron swarm and dread quake mortars and that's all the important information we're going to be getting in the video today the rest of the video is just showing off cool battle scenes and the animation and the new units there's nothing really interesting to add here they do show a few of the unit cards here with their stats but do bear in mind this was recorded in early access so those stats are likely to change so i don't feel the point in covering them when they're in flux and they are likely going to change before the release date that's everything that was shown in the showcase today but there's one thing that was missing in this video and that's the incentive to go and attack Nuln. There was no like timer or indicator to show that you have to go down and pressure that city to complete your final battle. But there's nothing about that in this video which is a little concerning. They have a perfect rivalry here and they didn't even mention the rivalry. Hopefully we will hear that later on when we start hearing about Elspeth's campaign. But there needs to be that rivalry there. It's such a key important rivalry in the Warhammer lore and if they just ignored it completely it's going to be a real shame. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this. I am really looking forward to this so far. I think the Nurgle changes are great. Tamakon looks awesome. The new units are amazing. I'm really excited about this DLC. But let me know what you guys think. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.